We all know that heavy objects fall to the ground. We all know that lighter than air objects move up away from the ground. Newton invented gravity. Einstein found problems with it, stuck his tongue out at Newton, said gravity is not a force, and invented his crazy theory of relativity and explained it as an effect of the warping of space-time. But this really hasn't stopped a growing community of flat earthers on social media, and so the greatest minds, mainly popular on Discord and YouTube, have finally discovered the truth behind why things really fall down or float up. The answer is relative density disequilibrium. The reason why things go up or down is not because of an external force acting on an object, but rather that the objects go and seek other objects of similar density. If you let go of an iron weight in the air, it has a preference to be with a denser ground than the air it's in. And so, as if by magic, that iron weight is going to somehow apply its own force until it's sitting on the ground again. And it's also worth noting that if you place a sufficiently heavy iron weight above a flimsy table, that iron weight will be so earth-friendly, it will break the table into pieces in its attempt to reach the ground. On the other hand, a helium-filled balloon doesn't really like the Earth much and wants to get away from it. So it's going to desperately apply its own sort of magical force to find its own happy place. And in this case, it will push itself up away from the ground, seeking more lighter than air objects such as itself. If you let go of a helium-filled balloon indoors, it will be prevented from continuing to ascend by being stopped by the ceiling. And if we compare the difference in the density between air and the helium, that difference is a lot less than the difference between the density of air and the iron weight. So really, the helium balloon is only mildly irritated by the ground, and unlike a 16-ton iron weight, the balloon is not going to try to bust a hole through the roof in an attempt to escape. Still, the greatest minds today are just tearing the lies of Newton, Einstein, NASA, the established scientific industrial complex, all the brainwashed sheep who think gravity exists, and these same radically thinking minds are working very hard to wake the sheeple up and to right the social wrongs of globe earth think. These powerful minds have finally cracked the science behind why things fall in our reality and have truly discerned the very essence of reality itself. Relative density disequilibrium is such an absurdly simple concept that all the greatest minds in all of history were unable to put their finger on it. So now we can finally start to use the knowledge that we have gained from relative density disequilibrium to start to address some of the very important issues in today's world. For example, the way it is explained to me, the relative density disequilibrium states that a denser object placed above a lighter object wants to switch positions. That means that the denser air above a helium-filled balloon wants to go down and the balloon wants to go up. If we prevent the balloon from climbing up to the top of the atmosphere by tying it to the ground, relative density disequilibrium, by all indications, tells us that the lighter balloon recognizes the air gradient and with a sort of magical invisible stretched rubber band will try to pull the lower pressure air that is above it downwards, attempting to find its counterpart of equal density. As a result, the surrounding air should be drawn downwards, creating an air current. And as we know, air is a fluid, so now we can use this very important property of reality made known to the Flat Earth community to harness the built-in energy within our current space-time domain. We can harness the power generated by that air current and put it to work for us. If we place enough balloons in a vertical wind tunnel and put a wind turbine at the base, we should be able to generate enough electricity to recharge a cell phone perhaps power our home. Or even if we have a large enough installation, we could probably even power an entire city. But there is one problem. There are unsubstantiated reports that NASA takes 25% of the helium supply for themselves. And so they selfishly use that helium supply to further the government-funded propaganda campaign to hide the shape of the Earth. If we just shut NASA down, we could take that helium that they're using for themselves and we could finally have the ever elusive free energy solution that we desperately need in our modern society and to stop global warming. That's not how it works. Really? That's not how any of this works. Well, uh, <clears throat> I think we've got a problem here. Uh, never mind. I think somehow gravity really is real and relative density disequilibrium is a 
pile of horse manure. Okay, bye.